Welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 32. <clears throat> We're going to go over the new tab container utility widget and some new form widget features that have been introduced in 6.2. Um, I will say that this was re live and recorded on May 24th. However, we had multiple um, technical issues with sound, etc., with our, our meeting, so I am redoing this solo. I'm going to go over the same stuff that we did on May 24th, however, just going to be by myself. So I won't be saying, is there any questions, because I'm all alone. <laughs> so here we go. <clears throat> so we have these widgets that were already pre-created for the development di developer diaries 32. And I'm just going to go and create an app. And we're going to first start with the tab container. So I'm going to create an app. And right away, I'm just going to go right to Utility Widget. So that's where it lives, and you're going to see Tab Container. First thing is, it wants to know the title for the first tab. Because if you're adding a tab container, you at least have to have one tab. So I'm just going to call that first. And then the name for this Tab Container widget. So I'm going to just say my uh, Tab Container. OK, so now I have a Tab Container. It has one tab. There's nothing in it. Um, so we're going to add a widget to this tab container, and it's just this plus sign. And I'm going to go to DD32, and we'll add customer listing, sure. OK, so that's our first tab. Now we can add another tab. So we can add a tab. And the new tab, I'm going to just say second. OK, and I'm going to add another widget to the second. All right. And uh, so now we have two tabs. And let's just see this. So tab container. I'm just going to create this app real quick. Tab container DD32. OK, it's created. Just launch that real fast. So here's our app with a tab container and it has two tabs. Each widget has each tab has one widget. <clears throat> um, let's go back to App Builder. I want to go over some of the app variables that can be linked to the tab container itself. So, oh, I'm sorry. I did the widget. I want to do the tab container. Okay. So you'll see that. For every tab that you have in the tab container, it'll have its own section for app variables. They will be the same. It'll just be for that tab. So you can say, <clears throat> I want this specific tab active. So you, let's say you're hiding and showing a section, and that section has a tab container. They're coming back to it. You always want to make sure that the first tab is active. Um, you can hide a tab. Um, you can make it not active. You can set the title of a tab. You can add a tooltip to the tab. <clears throat> this is all done via app variables, which I assume everyone's fairly familiar with. And this tab container works just like other widgets, where if I, let's say, add another widget, you know, I, it can be moved around. So I could, you know, can move left. You know, it's just like an, another widget you're used to. It just has tabs. Now, many, many versions previously like very very early on for app builder we had a tab panel however that was for the whole app so if you said i wanted my app to be a tab panel it was just tabs across the app and you couldn't do anything else just have many tabs and just one would be one big tab panel um so now the tab container it can be in its own it's its own widget has many widgets below itself per tab and can move around and be in different sections and, and so forth. So just like you're used to. And you can have two, you can have multiple tab containers. So let's just add another section. I'm going to do types. So I have type section and I'll just add another utility widget and it's a tab container. Uh, first type, type tabs. And then Add a widget to this one. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put in here though. 
Uh, we'll just make it look. See if these things work. I don't know if these will work, but okay. Um, <clears throat> so we have two tab containers within our app. And let's just quickly add a button to get to uh, types. And I'm going to go hide show, hide and show. And then I'm going to add a back button. So we can get back. This should be familiar. We've gone over developer diaries for doing this. I'm just switching sections so we can see the other tab panel. Let's see. Okay, we have our original tab panel. You can see we have this other widget just sitting here. Doesn't look great, but just to give you an idea, example types. And here, this is a good example. I didn't tell it to load, which you will have to do that. So let's do that real fast. I'm gonna, uh, load types. Oh, actually, I believe when I did types, my hide show, did I not? Oh, yeah, load day. I forgot to do that. You could do it with an app variable. I usually prefer to do an app variable where if we get a link, refresh. So then you can just, you know, say load. It's just like load the data because um, I would just prefer it that way. But let's just redo this. Load. Okay, types. There's my other tab panel, I'll go back. I have this one still. And I guess I should also show within the tab panel, you can add multiple widgets, of course. So let's, what's a widget I could just, I don't know what this one has. It doesn't have much. Uh, gauge, no, KPI, okay, here. So now I have a tab pan, my, my tab panel, first tab, my tab container, my first tab, it has multiple widgets. And then you can move those widgets around within the tab itself. So I want that left and right. I'm sure that looks great. Save. Go to, my frame. Go to types. Now you see the two widgets within that tab. So that is the tab panel or tab container. And uh, the next thing I want to, we want to go over is uh, some form items so that have been added. So let's go here. I already created a customer form. It's just, I just took all of the fields off, uh, off the file. Um, so right away you're going to see that this is what it used to look like. And everything is non-editable. So it just top down. Here are my fields, my form. Now, right away, I'm going to bring uh, show one item, which is non-editable field background. Um, this helps when you have many fields that are not editable for visual purposes. You can see now that it adds a background to it, so it's not just, just data all over the screen. Um, we recently worked on a project which had, oh, I don't know. A ton of non-editable fields in a form and it just just you know just it was all just seemed like data just floating around everywhere so this really helps especially when you it's it doesn't have a value and then also we have this bold field la uh, labels which is just bolts a field label so we'll leave that the other thing that we've added is number of columns so by default it is one and that's how it's always been you just could never change this and it's top down so I'm going to quickly just change it to two and see what we get. Now you see that each field is now, there's two per row because we said number of columns, two in each column, right? So now we have two columns. Now I can go to three columns. So now I have three columns. 
Let's go back to two. So this makes it easy for you to lay it out. Now you could have done this before, however, you'd have to create field groups to do this. Um, just extra work. And then also there's another benefit, which I will get to um, after I just explain this last part. I want to zero in on country. Um, so country, you know, it's it's the last one, but I want it to span the whole form. So if you go to, and we are in refine, and go to settings, you'll see span columns. I'm going to say, I want to span the number of columns. So you could, it, let's say this was number of columns three. I could say two. I could say one. I could say three. Here I'm going to say two because I want completely the width of the form. So span all columns, which is two. If I move this to three, let's get an idea. Now you'll see it's still spanning two because we set that. We'll put it back. So this makes it this this actually helps a lot for just laying out fields on the form quickly without having to add, create so many field groups. However, with that said, because of the number of columns we've added here, you can go to field groups and now field groups can uh, live next to each other. So I'm going to just quickly, this is probably not going to look nice, but just to give you an idea. So um, we'll do address and city, and then we'll do Span columns. I'm gonna leave as one, and I'm gonna do add one more field group. I'm gonna do address. I'm gonna do well, state and zip. So addr one addr two. Let's just see what we have here. Okay. So we can see that. These are all separate. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to resequence. I want to have these guys next to each other. Come on. There we go. Boom. So now I can have field groups, you know, next to each other. And you can change that too. So by default, it has the span columns of one. So if I decided uh, this, this one's going to be a span column, I want to whole, take up the whole form then boom, but if I put it back to one, now I have those field groups next to each other, which before we weren't able to do. <clears throat> and again, this was added to make things easier and not have to create field groups to lay out your form. Um, and that is it for the form, I believe. I'm just trying to go off of memory. Um, yes, that's it. So. We covered, let me just save this. I'm not even using it though, but I'll just save it. So we covered the tab container. And let's just add that form in so we can see it. So where should we add it? Uh, I'll just add another, I'll add a new tab form. Okay, so we talked over, went on over the tab container um, and the form. Let's just take a look to see our end result for that form in an actual app form. And you can see that, you know, those changes that we added with the columns, uh, the, you know, the background changing for display fields, non-editable fields. I will say also too, is if you make a, if you make a field editable on your form, and then when that form is running in an app, and if you've linked app variables, linked an app variable to say read only that form uh, field in the form, it would look as not editable if you had that checked. So, for example, I just want to show you link. There we go. So you can disable those fields, I should say. Um, if you do that, there's a empt uh, is empty, but again, it will take adhere to that non-editable if the field becomes editable. Um, and I guess I'm not showing the read only because none of them are editable. So let's just switch that real quick. Make this useful here. Okay. 
So I'm just going to say uh, names editable and countries editable. I'm having a look at it. Now, go back to that form. Link. There we go. Read only. So if you started, you know, setting those to read only, then it's not editable anymore. It would show as this versus when it's editable. So it'll still take on that attribute if you set it to true or click the, the checkbox. So yeah, that's the uh, tab, new tab container and some of the new form uh, options that we've added for 6.2. So thanks for uh, watching and uh, look forward to this, talking to you guys in the next developer diaries.